So today we can look at communications and how we use different frequencies to transfer data. Microwaves for mobile phones are the lowest frequency we're going to look at and they range between 0.8 and 2.6 gigahertz. Slightly higher frequency are Wi-Fi which also are microwaves but they're at 2.4 gigahertz as are Bluetooth which is again roughly 2.4 gigahertz. And finally, much higher than any of them is infrared used for remote controls, which is a whopping 320,000 gigahertz. So what does the high frequencies mean? Well, remember, a high frequency means a larger bandwidth, so you can get a greater number of channels. And also, we can transfer a lot more data. So when considering each of these in exam questions, you'll have to compare one to the other. So we need to think about the following. What's the power of the transmitter, the amount of energy per second that they emit? What's their range in air? What can they travel through? How many devices can they communicate with? Do you need line of sight or can they pass through walls? And finally, will the weather, water or light affect them? So firstly, let's look at microwaves for mobile phones. So microwaves are used for mobile phones and have a frequency range of about 0.8 to 2.6 gigahertz. So how do we communicate with mobile phones? Well, all of the country is divided into cells and these cells are different sizes. Um, within a cell, you have base stations around the edge. And when you go to phone, you send a signal uplink to the base station. So if you're talking, you will be sending a signal to the base station. That base station will send it on to where it needs to go. And then a different frequency will be used to downlink to send the message back to you, um, e.g. conversation back or a text back to you. So what size are these cells? Well, in the countryside, the cells are the largest. The key thing is the power of the transmitter cannot be too high because anybody that's close by would be exposed to high energy microwaves. There is no evidence at all that these cause any danger to health, but as a safety precaution, there's a limit to how powerful these microwaves can be from the base station. Now we know that the radiation or the intensity of the radiation drops very rapidly with distance away because of the inverse square law. So in the countryside, where the population density is low, the maximum size of the cells is 20 miles. After that, you're going to receive too lower signal. So what happens to cell size in cities? Well, the population density is much higher, which means you need more base stations uh, for that population. So you make the cell size small so that there's a chance people inside that cell can link to the station. So keeping the cells small in cities allows the number of people able to access the stations to increase. This is because each provider only has a limited number of channels for each cell. So if you can't get a signal, you'll have to wait for somebody to come off their phone so that there's a channel available for you. Uplink. Mobile phones connect to networks including Vodafone, T Mobile, Orange, etc. Each mobile phone provider is allocated a range, a band of frequencies to use. Mobile phones use microwaves, not radio waves, for the following two reasons. Firstly, remember the higher frequency of microwaves compared with radio waves gives a greater bandwidth which allows more channels and more data to be transferred. The second reason is the ability to communicate with satellites. Remember radio waves get absorbed by the ionosphere so can't reach the satellites. Whereas microwaves are transmitted through the ionosphere and get to the satellite and back down to earth. This means the power of the transmitter needs to be really high as the signal decreases in energy due to the inverse square law. 
Likewise, a satellite needs to amplify the weak received signal before sending it back to Earth. So the signals sent by mobile phones are also counted as high power to travel the distance to the base stations. You also need to know two key problems, disadvantages of mobile phones. If you are in a hilly area, you might receive good TV reception, but your mobile phone reception will be really poor. This is because radio waves have a much lower frequency and therefore a higher wavelength. So diffract, bend round the hill so you can receive them. However, microwaves have a much higher frequency and a smaller wavelength, so they don't diffract much around the hill so that the microwaves don't get to you and you get poor reception. The second key problem is rain because water absorbs microwaves strongly and therefore you get poor reception in heavy rain. Now we're going to consider Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi uses microwaves of about 2.4 gigahertz. Wi-Fi allows smartphones, computers and other devices like tablets or sonar speakers to be connected to the internet uh, via a router. The range of Wi-Fi is about 100 meters, so the signal needs to be medium power. Because Wi-Fi is of a higher frequency than microwaves for mobile phones, they carry more data, which is an advantage. The other advantage is Wi-Fi can travel through walls, so it doesn't need line of sight. Next, we can look at Bluetooth. Bluetooth uses the same range of frequencies as Wi-Fi, about 2.4 gigahertz. Because Bluetooth devices only need to have a short range of about 10 meters, the devices are low power. They're used to link one device to another. For instance, hands-free mobile phone to your car audio, or mobile phone to your headphones, or mobile phones to computers. In any household, you might have many people using Bluetooth devices, and it's vital that they don't interfere with each other or with the Wi-Fi, which has similar frequencies. They achieve this by using something called frequency hopping, which means that they continually change from one frequency to the other, so the chance of the devices being on the same frequency to interfere is very low. Other key advantages are they don't need line of sight as Bluetooth can travel through walls. They can also connect to more than one device at a time and frequency hopping limits data loss by interference. Finally, we're on to infrared for remote controls. So infrared has a much higher frequency, a whopping 230,000 gigahertz or 230 terahertz. Infrared is used in remote controls for transferring data to TVs, projectors, toy cars, model planes, helicopters, these are kids ones, etc. The infrared from the remote control needs to be in line of sight with the object, it can't travel through walls. This means it only needs a range of a few meters so is a low powered device. The key advantage of infrared over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is its much higher frequency allows it to transmit more data. The key disadvantages are it needs line of sight, it won't go through walls. Another disadvantage is it won't work well in bright sunlight. So if you're outside trying to control a kid's remote control car, it might not work that well. Finally, infrared is absorbed by moisture in the atmosphere so things won't work well in the rain or the fog. So finally, let's have a look at how we can apply what we've learned to some exam questions. Read through the exam question, pause the video, and I'll go through the answer in a minute. So the first one is they use frequency hopping so they don't interfere with each other. You don't have to know how frequency hopping works in detail, you just have to be able to state they use it. You can have any of these, but my advice is to go for one of these. 
connecting a mobile phone hands-free to your car, using wireless headphones, speakers, mouse or keyboards, or opening a car garage door. Read through this question and then pause the video, remembering it's worth two marks, so you need a linked pair. Mike raves so. So you can have any of these linked pairs. My advice is to use one of the following. First of all, we know microwaves are absorbed by storm or wet weather. So you could say storms or wet weather uh, absorb the signal. Or you could say that large terrains like hills or large buildings block out the signal or absorb the signal. The other one I'd recommend is that, of course, if the system is overloaded or the network is full in your cell, then that means that you won't be able to connect because there aren't any frequencies available. So this is a six mark question and it says, compare the use of mobile phones, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi communications. Your answers should include reference to their use, frequencies and range. So compare means the similarities and differences. And you need to look at the similarities of uses of Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, mobile phones, the similarities or differences in frequency and the similarities and differences in range. If you don't answer all three of those sections, you won't be able to get up to six marks. So have a go at this and I'll go through the answers in a minute. It's important to remember that examiners really like you to answer in bullet points because they can tick off the facts really fast. One similarity is all use microwave radiation. The next one is they all have similar frequencies about two gigahertz. However, a difference is mobile phones use the lowest of the frequency bands. Wi-Fi and mobile phone networks are networked, whereas Bluetooth is just device to device. Both Wi-Fi and mobile phone signals can easily pass through walls. I know Bluetooth can, but not very easily. Mobile phones communicate over a large distance whereas Wi-Fi have a range of about 100 metres and Bluetooth about 10 metres. Don't forget mobile phone transmitters have a high power, whereas Wi-Fi use medium power and Bluetooth use low power. Finally, mobile phones communicate with each other via base station, whereas Wi-Fi devices use a router. I hope that going through these questions has helped to see how we can apply what we've learnt. Finally, the last three slides show you the PLC specification for what we've covered. Pause after each one. 